Hey everyone, welcome to my latest video. It is going to be Disney themed today, hence my Minnie Mouse t-shirt. Um, I got this in TK Maxx actually, um, but I've been gradually building up my um, collection of Disney t-shirts um, in readiness for my family holiday to Disney World Florida. Um, so we're going to Orlando, Florida in September. And this will be my fourth visit with my partner Phil, but our first visit with our daughter Rose, who will be two. Once we go, she turns two at the end of the month. So we're very excited. We really, well, Phil really wanted to take her last year when she was one, and I said, no, that's... For me, that was just a little bit too young. She was walking at that stage, but she wasn't into Disney films or anything. Um, now, like, she's fully into Frozen. She's fully into Moana. Um... This morning actually she watched Mulan for the first time and enjoyed that so I think she'll love it and hopefully she'll be able to do most of the rides and all that sort of thing I'm sure it'll be very overwhelming for her to see it all um, but as I, um, when people tell, say oh she's too young to take do you know the holiday is as much for Phil and I as it is for Rose we absolutely love it hence why you know we're going back for a fourth time this will be Phil, Phil's probably 10th or 11th time because he went all the time with his parents when he was a teenager so he's more of a Disney geek than me um, and would probably be better doing this video um, than me but this video is all about my Disney bucket list for 2018 so all the things that I sort of want to tick off my list um, when we go on holiday because I'm so excited because it will be a brand new experience with Rose and I just want to make sure I'm doing all the right things to do with a child and do all those things that I haven't done before because um, there's so much I haven't done. And of course, money always plays a part because, you know, it's expensive to get to Florida. It's expensive to purchase your tickets for Disney. And if you're like us, we're also going to Universal. So we get the, the combo ticket, which allows you to go to Disney and Universal at any time over the course of the two weeks that you're there. And it's really expensive. And then there's all the added extras, um, which I'll talk about. Um, more of later but yes I wanted to sort of uh, put down on video what my bucket list is in the hope that I will definitely um, tick hopefully at least half of them off uh, if not more. Okay so I'm going to refer to my phone throughout because um, this is where I've got my um, bucket list items down so um, I'm going to start off with the rides the new rides that I definitely want to go on um, so the first one is Pandora which is a whole new area of Animal Kingdom and if your avatar fans you'll know what the pandora world is all about um uh, this is being built actually when we were last there so we were last there in september 2015 and the work had started on this area of animal kingdom so very exciting and the thing about disney is that they're always um developing a new area they're always bringing new rides and new experiences and um, which keeps you coming back for more because i think uh, the next time we'll go, there'll be like new Star Wars rides, which and Phil is a huge Star Wars fan, so you know another excuse to go. But the Pandora ride, um, Phil especially loves Pandora, uh, loves Avatar the film, so he's gonna go bananas with that. But there's a couple of rides there. I think um, the big one is Flight of Passage, which is an augmented reality uh, ride, which sounds amazing. Um, and then there's also a boat ride. I think it's called the Navi River Boat Ride. So both of those sound great, but, um, you know, I think the whole, there's a whole big area dedicated to Pandora World there. So I think just even walking around, um, you know, Disney don't do things by half. They just don't put a ride in and that's it. You know, they, it's a whole experience around it. So even when you're in the queue waiting on the ride, no doubt there'll be lots to entertain you. Um, so really excited for that. Um, so that's an animal kingdom. Um, then uh, the next Thing that I want to do in Animal Kingdom is up the Great Bird Adventure so this is going to be a show and I am a big fan of the Up um, movie I just loved it from the very first minute that I watched it I loved it um, and I remember the first time I went to Disney with Phil I was really disappointed that there was nothing really at the parks um, related to Up and I just was really surprised there wasn't even much merchandise and that was back in 2011 but they've changed that now so they're doing a show in Animal Kingdom and it follows uh, Russell and Doug and um, yeah it's supposed to be lovely so it is so I will look forward to that what's the next one on my list Um the next one we're moving on to Epcot then um, and to Frozen Ever After 
So again, very excited that they've brought, I finally brought in a Frozen um, ride. This came, I think Frozen Ever After launched in 2017, so just last year, and it replaced the Millstrom ride, if any of you have went and remember that. So apparently it's very similar to that ride, um, and it just, it, I think it's like a little boat trip around, as if you're going around Arendelle. So that sounds amazing, and like, as I've already mentioned, Rose is obsessed with Frozen and Anna and Elsa, so I think she will just love that. Um, and I'm hoping to get a fast pass for that. So it's coming up to that time where I can book the fast passes on my Disney Experience app. And that's definitely when I want to get uh, get a fast pass to if I can. A fast pass, if you don't know, is um, you can book these fast passes in advance for very popular rides. Because often you will, for the popular rides, you could be waiting, you know, anywhere between an hour or two hours. Plus, um, especially in the really busy seasons. Now we're going in September. And September used to be not such a busy season, but definitely over the years, it's become more busy because they've extended like the Halloween experience and stuff in Disney. So it's becoming more popular um, as a time to go. So yeah, I'm hoping to get a fast pass for Frozen Ever After so that we're not queuing for ages, but it is one of the newer rides in Epcot and it is, a, you know, from a very popular film. So uh, not sure if we'll manage to get fast passes for that. And then the other new ride, which I am so excited about, probably over everything actually, is Toy Story Land, which is in Hollywood Studios. And uh, Hollywood Studios is probably my favourite park at Disney actually. Most people would say Animal Kingdom, or most people would say Magic Kingdom. But for me, I just love um, Hollywood Studios. And Toy Story Land has uh, launched there just like a month ago. So I've been, you know, eagerly watching people's... Um, YouTube videos, people who've been or you know popular YouTubers who've been invited down to check out the new area even before um, it properly launched. So with Toy Story Land, um, as uh, the name suggests, it's quite a big area. It's a land inside Hollywood Studios and it's as if everything is super sized. So it's as if you're one of Andy's toys and everything is massive. So I think that alone would be a fantastic to experience. So the main ride at Toy Story Land is the Slinky Dog Dash which is um, a roller coaster and it looks really really good. Uh, I think that's mainly like a lot of young kids can go on that but I don't know if we'll be able to go and uh, to bring Rose on it so we will probably just take it in turns Phil and I to go on it. The other thing that sounds cool about Toy Story Land is that you can sit in and eat um, Andy's lunchbox so you can have um, what Andy has in his lunchbox which is like a grilled cheese sandwich uh, I think there's variations on that, like a beef brisket grilled cheese sandwich and all that sort of thing. And then for dessert, there's like, um, you can get like a strawberry pop tart type thing or a chocolate pop tart. Uh, again, I've been watching uh, people review uh, the food on YouTube. So that's all the main uh, rides and new shows that are on my bucket list. Um, the next thing, number five, is Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. So whilst Phil and I have always went to Disney in September time, not always has the Halloween party um, been on from September, but it keeps increasing in length. So now I think in Disney, the Halloween stuff starts at the end of August. So I think this year we are going to book tickets to, to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Um, it's about 60 pounds per adult and a little bit less per child, but because Rose is only two, we don't have to pay for her, and we don't have to pay for her at the parks at all, um, because she's two, you only start paying for kids when they turn three. So that's another brilliant reason why uh, we wanna go this year as well. Um, but the Halloween party, I just think it'd be so much fun. And our neighbors actually went with their little uh, girl when she was only like six months old. And they just said it was amazing and they um you trick or treat all night long and they came home with like bags full of candy and like proper good uh chocolate and candy um and then obviously they have you know halloween and um, parades but what i'm really looking forward to is that the witches from Hocus Pocus come out and do a bit of a show so that will be the main thing for me so yes we still have to book the tickets we'll probably book it through mm, attraction tickets direct which is where we got our combo tickets for Disney and Universal. So what's next on my list? Number six is Epcot Food and Wine Festival. So the Epcot Food and Wine Festival is another reason why September is getting busier each year because it runs, um, I don't know when exactly it runs, but it runs you know, over part of September anyway. And that's a great way to bring more people to Epcot because I think Epcot tends to be the least popular park out of Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, and Hollywood Studios 
and for me it's probably my least favourite um, but with Frozen Ever After there with the Epcot Food and Wine Festival and uh, there's lots of good places to eat in Epcot as well I think it's definitely um, attracting more people um, so the Epcot Food and Wine Festival is there's going to be lots of uh, special food booths um, to go and sample food and um, buy food I presume as well there's going to be demonstrations as well um, of well-known chefs doing their thing um, I'm not really sure how it works in terms of payment, what you have to pay for, what you don't have to pay for, but I definitely want to um, experience that this year because I would consider myself to be quite a foodie and I think Disney are trying to really um, up their food game as well. So I think that will be interesting. It's been running a few years now. The next on my list, still food orientated, is character dining. I don't know whether... I put it on my bucket list but I'm not sure if we'll do it this year. We've never done character dining and I know some adults, some big kids uh, do do character dining um, even without children but although Rose is really into Disney I think she will be quite, I don't want to say fearful but I think she'll be quite scared of the big characters, you know, the the big Minnie and Mickey Mouse and all that sort of thing. So I don't know if it would be a waste of money to bring her to, to spend all that money on character dining for her not to be um, really interested in it and maybe to be a wee bit uh, tearful. I don't know, she could be fine but um, I have looked into it but you really need to book these things in advance especially the popular spots like if you wanted to go to Cinderella's castle and dine with the princesses like you're talking months in advance and we're not doing that. Um, I think she would love to see Anna and Elsa but again I think she'd be better like if they were at a distance to her and not right up close. Um, I think it might maybe be better to do that whenever she's more, you know, primary school age, like five or six. But I am still toying with the idea. There's the Crystal Palace where she can meet the Winnie the Pooh characters and apparently they have a good breakfast buffet type thing going on. But it's quite expensive for what you get from what I gather anyway. You know, you're talking anywhere between like 35 to 65 sort of dollars per adult and then you have to pay for the child as well. And a lot of the time it's just buffet style or what they call family style, which is um, you're brought out big plates of food, but you can just help yourself to. But it's nothing fancy. Like for breakfast, you'll get like cute Mickey waffles. Um, you know, you'll get, I suppose, your cereals and fresh fruit and um, that sort of thing. But we'll see. I think I'd rather spend the money on the Halloween party, to be honest. But it's still on my bucket list anyway. Uh, okay, so next is um, the Kiss Kid Night at Magic Kingdom. I've heard a lot about this actually of late. I never knew it existed until maybe a lot of months ago. So it's um, this Kiss Kid Night happens um, when the park closes, when Magic Kingdom closes after the big fireworks show and everything, uh, which we've done in the past and highly recommend. But usually you're in a mad dash once the show um, ends to get out and get to your car, get to your bus or whatever. But apparently if you stay and wait and wait until the park officially closes um, the Cinderella's castle twinkles to life and then there's like a voiceover that tells you, you know, thank you for coming and we hope you had a wonderful stay and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. But apparently it's supposed to just be very magical and moving and then it ends with Mickey Mouse doing a little um, sign off as well to people so apparently it is worth staying and apparently you can check out YouTube videos to see what it's like. I haven't done that but I, I must do that but um, that's on my Disney uh, bucket list anyway and then we're getting to the final two so the other one is Disney Boardwalk and I heard about Disney Boardwalk through the YouTuber um, Mummy Daddy Me, um, Katie I think her name is and um, I really enjoy her videos and she has went to Disney World in Orlando quite a few times with her kids and I think it was the last time they were there and um, they went to the Disney Boardwalk area and I didn't even know this existed. When I looked it up it's apparently um, quite a short walk from Epcot and it's just reminiscent of turn of the century boardwalk. I think, you know, if you, if you know what Coney Island looks like apparently it's supposed to be like that and there's lots of places to eat. Um, it's just supposed to be lovely to walk around. There's entertainment as well there at night if you go. But I just think it sounds really, really good. So I'm definitely going to do that. But there's, there's again, this is another example of there's so many things that I don't feel that Disney really, really promote and put out there that are happening that are great to do. So um, that's one thing. And then last on my bucket list is Disney Springs, which is the brand new Downtown Disney. So I went to Downtown Disney, I think, every, every time the last 
three times that we visited I've been to Downtown Disney and I love it. You can easily get to Downtown Disney from the Disney parks um, using their transport system and um, it's it's separate from the main Disney parks. I, I think it's probably about a 20 minute um, car ride away and it's just a massive big area with loads of restaurants and shops and entertainment things to do for entertainment as well it, but it's underwent a huge big um, development and update over the last few years even the last time we went um, they were you know increasing the size of the place and adding new parts to it so I think 2018 was the was the date that it finally um, completed its renovation and I'm so excited to go back and um, I really like the name Disney Springs but I also like the name Downtown Disney um, but uh, I'm really excited to try all the new restaurants that have launched there or that have opened there and I've, I follow Disney Food Blog on YouTube. They're an amazing YouTube channel which just review all the food of Disney and um, now Disney Springs as well. So some of the restaurants I want to check out, there's like a place called The Polite Pig which is new, which is a new barbecue place which just looks awesome. Like you're not going to go to downtown Disney. There are some like fine dining restaurants in Disney and things but most of the time you're going to get good American grub and I think the barbecue place sounds great. There's also a new Aristocrats place for which does those amazing bubble waffles with ice cream and like pretzels in it and oh it looks so good. There's the good old favourites like um, Rainforest Cafe which I love their burgers and uh, House of Blues do amazing steaks and burgers as well um, and but uh, there's way more shops now so there's the likes of Alex and Annie for jewellery, there's coach for your lovely designer handbags so it's um, definitely more to keep you there um, so I'm excited to see that but yeah that's my um, top 10 Disney bucket list for 2018 um, so hopefully I get to cross quite a few of them off when we go I'm so excited like I say can't wait to see Rose's reaction when we arrive at Disney for the very first time and um, yeah it's just going to be lovely to see it through her eyes but thank you for watching guys please subscribe if you don't already please give this a video please give this video a thumbs up if you like it and until the next time bye